Mm. And uh, funny enough that the topic that I chose today is about uh, prosperity and riches. And uh, God's just confirming. I mean, why I chose this, uh, or at least why I was led into this, is um, I know God is going to bless us abundantly. There is a wealth increase coming, and uh, we need to be prepared for it. But we need to explore this uh, area that we don't mess it up, um, you know, when the wealth comes in, you know. Uh, um, and also, uh, you know, it just uh, uh, like a study and a discussion into leading us the right way. There is a lot of uh, prosperity gospel. Uh, or, or I really don't know what that is, but, uh, you know, there is something, you know, which is slightly uh, extreme uh, from uh, uh, what the Bible says. Uh, and also there is, a, you know, there is a, Another gospel preached that uh, the poor, the better, you know, uh, you know, uh, and there is an extreme opposite uh, how you are supposed to be poor uh, and so on. So we, I just want to bring in uh, some uh, uh, sort of a middle ground where we can stay and it, uh, it we are safe. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. So, I mean, most of the time, you know, people, when you say, I'm going to go into ministry, they leave the job that they are doing, and they go on to uh, doing ministry. And um, uh, so there is an example that people always t talk about is Paul, how he has a business, you know, he runs a business, and he is generating income through that. And so he boldly says, I, I haven't begged and asked you for any money. Although I could have asked for money. But he is creating wealth. But if you look at the gospel uh, more carefully, Paul is the one who talks more about how he's suffering and how he's a lack in his life. So... Uh, lack in his life. But he says, uh, whether I have abundance or whether I have lack, I have learned to be satisfied. Okay? So that is a key for us. Okay? So we always choose Paul as how he's able to create wealth and, uh, you, know, you know, take the gospel all the throughout the world. But he People forget to see the part that it says that he's been bound. He's in prison. Nowadays, if a minister goes to prison, oh, that's it, finish, end of story, end of the ministry. You know, if a minister is arrested or a minister is accused and, you know, put in, uh, you know, that's it. But there, Paul, is most of his gospel, uh, uh, or, or what do you call it, most of the letters that he wrote, are from prison. So that made people miss. But the rest of the people, Jesus said, come follow me. They have to leave. So, sometimes you need to work. Sometimes you need to leave. Nothing is the right way. As long as the Lord is leading you in the right way. Amen. Okay, so. Do you know of any wealthy people in the Bible? Hmm? Solomon? Huh? Three kings? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, they blessed Jesus. Abraham? Yeah. yeah. Jacob? Isaac. So, David, yeah, yeah. 
So I was going to actually start this message by saying a comment like, you can't be a, a pastor or a preacher and be poor. And, uh, you know, I know the general public uh, would say, oh, this guy is talking because he's getting congregation's money. Yeah, so that's not where I'm going because we don't take any money. Um, anyway, so what it is is I was looking in the point, oh, look, God has blessed all these people. Any leader the Lord has, uh, you know, chosen, God has provided. Yeah? So we say, see that in the Bible also. So that's why I was going to go uh, 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 give a message like how, you know, you can't preach, the, uh, you, you can't be poor and be, preach the word. You can't be poor and work for the kingdom. But then I stumbled upon other Bible passages which brought to some middle ground where we can uh, start working our way. Amen? Right. So... Um, Anyone brought the Bible today? Um, okay, so let's open our Bibles. This is the time where that we open our Bibles. Uh, okay, let's... Uh, Acts 4, 36-37... Is uh, one uh, mentions one rich person. So there is this person, Joseph. He had enough that he could sell one of the properties and he laid at the feet of uh, the disciples. Then how about Dorcas, uh, Acts 9.36? I've got Acts 9.36. Amen. So she she had so much wealth that she did a lot of charitable works. Then um, Acts ten one. Anyone got Acts ten one? It's about Cornelius. Anyone without look re looking or reading? Can you say what happened? Cornelius. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And were it, it, it they, the Lord, yeah, the Lord saw and uh, sent an uh, uh, angel, isn't it? Angel and said, uh, the Lord has seen, it has come as incense unto, uh, you know, your charitable giving. Yeah. So the angel showed up. Uh, anyone want to read that quickly? Extend one. Uh, Amen. Then um, Acts uh, 13, um, 6 to 12. It's a bit long. Uh, the person's name is uh, Serigas Paulus. Mm -hmm. Have we got this one?
So there is he, he is also a rich person, um, wealthy person who has believed in the Lord. Yeah, we never, uh, I, I never saw that name. <laughs> uh, everyone knows Lydia, isn't it? Yeah, uh, the lady who sows and, you know, she died and uh, they prayed. Uh, yeah, so that's Acts 16. Jason, anyone remember Jason? Mm. Acts um, 17, 5 to 9. How many of you know Aquila and Priscilla? Yeah. How many of you know Manasson of Cyprus? No. M N A S O N. Mm. How many of you know Philemon? Philem huh? Philemon? Philemon. Yeah, just one book. <laughs> so, yeah, we know him. So let's uh, look at Jason. Acts 21, 16. Uh, let's jump on to, because of time, I have to just quick, quickly conclude. Uh, so, uh, 2 Corinthians 6.10, uh, if someone can read, 2 Corinthians 6.10. So, this is Paul uh, saying about... Um, Did you hear that? This is how, how, how in his mind, this is how Paul was thinking. Yeah? Suffering. And uh, uh, poor. But making many rich. Having nothing, yet possessing everything. Remember Jesus uh, said at the well, uh, you don't know what I have eaten, what I have had. What I've done is satisfying for me. I'm full. Remember? So Paul is also full and rich and abundant. He's saying how by doing God's work, he's feeling satisfied. Right. Uh, Philippians 4, 11 to 12. Amen. So he's learned how to be content in every situation, in abundance and in need. Okay. So uh, some of the questions that I wanted to ask was, uh, is a material prosperity, is it right for the Christian? What are your views? The material prosperity. Is it a right for all Christian? Yes? Okay. Okay. 
So does the blessing of the Lord include material blessing? Good. So the main, uh, the, the last question or is, can every Christian be expected to become wealthy? What about the poor nations, people who are in, uh, deprived? Amen. Okay. Just wanted to have uh, take your views. How many of you think uh, being a Christian you should be poor? Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so le let's look at uh, Luke uh, 15, uh, so 12, 15. Luke. Okay. Okay. Um, Luke sixteen nineteen to thirty one. No, no. We, we'll come to it. I'll conclude it. Yeah. So uh, when I ask question, you can answer. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Okay, so, uh, sorry, let me just stop there. How many of you know the sto a story of Lazarus, the beggar? In that story, there was a rich man and a poor man. Who goes to heaven? The poor man. Okay. So that is the story on, on Luke uh, 16, 19 to 31. Yeah? So I don't have to uh, read it and say it. So you all know, uh, end of the story is, is the poor man who goes to heaven. So, um, and um, in the Bible also s talks a lot about the danger of having wealth. Yeah, remember those passages? Luke 18, 24 to 25. Can someone read it, please? Okay, let me read it. Jesus said, How difficult it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. So, Jesus is saying it is difficult for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Let's come to an another one. Remember, this guy, I think, um, I forgot was who is, he comes in the night, uh, no, he comes and asks Jesus, what a wealthy guy comes and asks, what must I do? Uh, to uh, enter the kingdom. And Jesus says, sell everything, give to the poor, and come, follow me. He went away. Okay? So, I'm just bringing bo both sides, yeah, uh, for us to land somewhere. Okay? 
all right? I know it, it might sometimes shake your foundation, uh, but it's okay. I just want to <laughs> put it in the right place. Uh, okay. Uh, Jesus teaching about the dangers of wealth in his parables about the rich farmer who acquired sufficient wealth to uh, secure a comfortable retirement. He called uh, that person a fool. At his, uh, uh, let's read that, Luke 12, 16. Did he call him a fool? No. Luke 12, 16 to 21. So, this is where the passage which says, And does it say, what does it say? Lay up. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it says, lay up the treasure in heaven, not on earth. Okay? So that passage is also there. This is Jesus talking about wealth. Okay? Right. How many of you remember uh, in Mark 8.36, it says, uh, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. What is denying yourself? Mm-hmm. It could uh, go that way. Yeah. Yeah, le uh, go Mark 8, 36. This is how Jesus is calling uh, to be, you know, as a disciple. Is it it? Okay. Loses his own. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay, let's go to uh, jump to uh, 1 Timothy 6. Yeah, yeah love of money. Godliness with content. Contentment is, is great gain. Amen? So are you beginning to get the picture? Okay. So, how many of you think poor is a curse? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm 
Okay, so let me put it this way. Um, can you be a Christian and poor? So we should be rich. All Christians should be rich. Okay. But do you think it is a character of a Christian? Or it is it is a let's hmm? like a character of a Christian. Like I, I, if someone is poor when you go to, you know, Sri Lanka, India, uh, Africa and see people who are poor following Jesus, who are, you know, sold out for Jesus. What are your thoughts? Hmm? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, the way I, I think is, I mean, you, you become a Christian, but still there, is, there are things that you're carrying. Revelations that you are not open to yet. Because the truth is going to set you free. The revela revelation about Jesus is going to set you free. And as a man thinketh, so is he. So if you believe that God is going to bless you and truly believe, have faith for it, you will be blessed. But if you br take in the poverty mentality, I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor, you know, self-confessing and, you know, looking everything again as a man thinker. So will he be. But there is a, there is a transition. You know, uh, I also re was reminded about this disciple asked, Lord, whose sin is it? Is it his or his father's? Jesus said, Oh, this is to bring glory to the Father. So there are situations that people might be in to bring glory to the Father. We don't know. This is my thinking. If my thinking is wrong, please change. <laughs> please change. My. But, you know, sometimes God wants to take glory in blessing somebody. You know, before... Abra Abraham or Jacob or I, uh, Isaac or those people got blessed. They weren't in a place of abundance, isn't it? You know? So there is a transition. But I strongly believe if God has given you a vision for big things, like, you know, not small things, God will make a way. He will provide for you. You know, there is a release of finance for you. Amen? Because how did Solomon build? Because of David. Because his father done all the hard work. And why did uh, God uh, bless David? Because he's a man after his heart, own heart. And everything was added. I know from the scriptures, it's basically saying, if you're faithful to God, you will be blessed. So, faithless can see not blessed. Yeah? Is, is that okay? Acceptable? Okay. Okay, one more warning. So, why I'm saying this warning is, once you have your wealth, God's going to definitely bless 
each and every one here. Once you have the wealth, you can mess it up. Yeah? So that's why I am going through the warnings. So we are okay. And also that there is a time where little is given and tested. How faithful you are and then much will be given. Yeah? We are all managers of finance, isn't it? Uh, true story. How many of you know that I, uh, the Lord provided 5,000? Uh, 80 something, 6 pounds something. So then, um, you know, then in my mind, should I sow in the 10%? Not, you know, is it a gift from the Lord? So because I already someone from over the uh, internet who is watching asked, uh, Ruben, do you have to give, uh, you know, 10% of gift? I said, no, no, if the Lord asks you to, you know, give. Yeah? First, uh, it's a gift, like, you know. <laughs> uh, but, um, so, same thing, you know, I asked for money for business, and the Lord provided. Now I'm with the, uh, uh, do I give 10%? And uh, so, uh, in, in the end, I, have to, I had to give 10% into the church. Not only that, I had to uh, support a ministry with that uh, finance that I sowed in, uh, you know, so that they may start a ministry. So, uh, so uh, cut a long story short. You know, God is going to provide, and there will be little tests along the way. Uh, how, you know, are you going to hold on to what you got and uh, be stingy, and uh, or are you going to release it? Uh, not not covered, yeah. So this is a true story. So, mm. okay, um, one Timothy six. Actually, 1 Timothy 6, 9 to 10, if someone can read. Mm-hmm. So, you can be poor and still have love for money. Is that okay? Is that understood? You can be rich and have love for money. What is love for money? Being greedy? Okay. Greedy, uh, putting before everything. Mm -hmm. Selfish. Okay. Yeah, it's all all of the above. Um, I, I I feel that if you are not willing to depart, uh, let it go out of you. That is a love for money, you know. And trust me, God will test each in every level. But if you see the wealthiest people in the world, Christians or non-Christians, they are very charitable. In fact, some of them even have got so much wealth that they have resigned their, their posts, like Bill Gates, and uh, looking after the charity that uh, you know, they want to give. Unl until you have a, you know, that, that uh, attachment is, you know, removed, S that means uh, until then you are still having love for money. Some people are okay with 
of thousand. Some people are okay with ten percent of hundred thousand. What about a million? Ten percent? No, this is you know it, it, the example. You know, uh, yeah. If if I get a uh, got a billion, uh, ten percent of that, I will think so much. Can I release it? Can I let it go? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I'm just saying. Huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. We have to. We have to. Yeah, we have to. And so the. <laughs> no, no. I'm here. Everyone here is tithing well and uh, sowing well. Thank you so much. It's nothing to do with that. But I'm just preparing your heart how uh, higher level. Yeah, because, you know, you don't have to sow in here. It could be an, uh, another ministry, uh, uh, you know, uh, another family, uh, you know, someone, uh, you know, uh, orphanage in India. Uh, you know, it could be anything, but how are you willing to let that go? You know, I'm, 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 I'm giving you 110%. Once you let it go, God will uh, back you up and, you know, bless you abundantly. Once I let go of that 10% that I got, I'm, things begin to shift, you know, uh, uh, where there was no profit in the business for a long time. It, uh, last two weeks, it started making money. It's not a lot, but it's, I'm, not I'm not in a loss. <laughs> in a loss is worse than a little profit, isn't it? So... God will back you up, you know. It's the heart. Amen. All right. So, all right. I think uh, everyone is falling asleep. Let's uh, jump to and conclude. This is my conclusion, uh, which I just took it from somewhere, so I'm going to read it. Wealthy Christian can honor Christ, especially by being humble, generous, and godly. While being wealthy. Poor Christian can honor him, especially by being content, full of faith, generous, and god. Uh, uh, godly while being poor. The other thing what happens is if you are in a place of poor, you know something? There is a lot of faith. A, a, a poor person has, you can say, a lot of faith because they have no security of money. They have only one security. It's God. Yeah? So, God will give you that. You know? So, by, by, by that faith, you can have your provisions be released. You know? When we don't have money, God is our provider. Yeah? You can tap into that. Like uh, you all agreed. We shouldn't be poor if you are Christian because by faith you can have the provision from the good father. Did you get that, Vahida? Faith is there among people who don't have much because they don't have security of finance. They have only God. So, they can tap into that by faith. They can ask the Lord 
to bring in the finance, to bring in the job, to bring in the, you know, provision. Amen? It is clear that in the Bible, wealth uh, is felt wealth is far less important than contentment, joy, peace, and holiness. Everyone agree? Love and generosity. Yeah? People with this characteristic are, according to the Bible, truly prosperous. Bible also says what true prosperity is. You know, with having all this, you know, contentment, joy, peace, holiness, love. This is true prosperity. I, I, in my head, I was thinking this way as well. It's like an artist. They can draw well. Somebody who can't draw well, just appreciate the person's artist. But it is a skill. To create wealth is a skill God has given. You can ask for it. If you're not an artist, you can ask the Lord to provide. So it is like a, you know, a skill to create wealth. That's how I think. You can always ask for that skill. And when, when you get it, make sure that what is the wealth that you're creating, you're giving. The more you give, the more you get. What's the point, you know? The little that you have, you haven't given. Okay? I'm talking from my life also. Please don't misunderstand. So, whether rich or poor in the world, the responsibility of every Christian is to keep the will of God first in their lives. Everyone agree? So, it is not job first. It's not business first. It is God first. Are you doing the will of God? That is very important because somebody might be called to be a pastor, but he must, might be doing a business. Some are called for both. But it is important to, to do what you are called to do. Because probably a businessman is there to look after the pastor's needs if, he, if God has called him for full time. Yeah. Jesus said, one's life does not consist in abundance of the blessing he possesses. Everyone agree? Blessing doesn't mean what we possess. Is that agreed? Amen. A zealous Christian who may be poor in the things of the world will be rich in faith towards God. Amen. Okay, let me conclude in that. Conclude there. All right, so basically this, uh, you know, to bring a middle ground to, to us as God blesses us and increases the wealth that we have, that we don't forget the poor. We don't forget, you know, we don't look down on the poor. If you know how to catch fish, teach the man to catch the fish. Tamper, give the fish. <laughs> yeah? That's what Jesus did. Come, I will make you fishes of men. Okay? Alright, so let's wait uh, for the Lord. <laughs>